Hello everyone. This video describes how to use WBS charts in the WBS Schedule Pro software. Uh, what is a WBS chart? Uh, well, a WBS chart stands for Work Breakdown Structure Chart, and it's a way to organize tasks in a project using a hierarchical or top-down based diagram. It displays summary tasks to represent groups of related tasks. Um, for example, these are summary tasks here. And a summary task is an item in the WBS chart that has subordinate items. It summarizes and rolls up information from the lowest level all the way up to the top. So all the information at these lowest level items, which are defined as tasks, will roll up to each subsequent level summary task all the way to the top. So this WBS that you're looking at here, you see are the summary tasks and the detail tasks. If I double click on a summary, I can see that it has information that is rolled up from its detailed task. But the question is how to get from a blank planning screen to this structure here. So that's what we're going to concentrate on initially. When you first open WBS Schedule Pro, you are in a WBS chart by default. And you look over here, you can see your list of views. If you are showing your views as your pane, if not, you can click on the views tab down here to go from seeing either a list of tasks, notes, or views. And by default, the WBS Schedule Pro software utilizes the planning view as the uh, initial view to begin planning your project. And the reason for that is the planning view is a very simple WBS chart. It shows summaries and tasks in more of a top-down, left-right fashion. And we'll show you some more of the other views in a bit. But for now, when starting planning of a project, it's, we think it's best to use the planning view. So with a blank planning view or a blank chart when you first open the program, to add your first item, just hit the insert button. That inserts a task. You can also use the drop down arrow to insert uh, an item to the left of what you just added or to the right, which is the task after. I can also insert a summary task to that item or a subtask. If I insert a summary task, it will insert an item above the selected task, and I can begin typing this uh, name to represent that this will be the project summary, and this is a task below that. Again, a summary task is anything with a subordinate, so as I add tasks under other tasks, they will either be tasks if they're uh, sibling tasks to other tasks or their uh, subordinate or subtasks if they're underneath a summary. So if I go back to the insert drop down list, I can add another task after the task that I have underneath the summary task. And also notice that when I add something, it has a red box around it. That is the current or selected task. And most everything you do in the program is in relation to the selected task, the one with the red box around it. So if I add a new task, it would be added relative to the, the task with the red box around it. For all you keyboard users out there, there are keyboard shortcuts to adding tasks. And the keyboard shortcuts are here listed in the drop-down list. It's the, using the Alt key with your arrow keys. So in other words, if I hit Alt left arrow, that would insert a new task to the left of the selected task. Alt right arrow inserts a task to the right. Alt down will insert a subtask and Alt up will insert a summary task in relation to the selected task. For example, if I'm selecting this task and I hit Alt right, I get a new task to the right of that. If I choose Alt down, I get a new task below that. If I don't want a task or I want to delete a task, I can delete it using the delete key or by selecting that task, I can hit the delete button and it will delete that task. So I can delete tasks, I can undo that I can redo that, and that's how to get rid of tasks or, or undo things too. Uh, one thing I want to mention here is the proper way to structure a project. And what I did when I created this plan was I created these tasks in a left-right fashion. These are three tasks now that are subordinates to the summary task up here. Sometimes we see people create projects this way. And that's not right, because task three is a subordinate of task two. Task two will become a summary task. If I double click on that, I can see that it is a summary task, and it is rolling up information from the task below it. 
in fact, there's a YouTube video out there of how to use our, our one of our older tools with our WBS tool that shows the entire project as being this top-down fashion, and it's not, it's not right. But if you get into the situation, one thing you can do is use another feature, and that's how to rearrange tasks in the chart by clicking and dragging. So if I'm on this particular task and I want to move it next to this task, task two next to task one, I simply click and drag, and you can see that there's a when I hover over the, the, the task I want to put it in relation to, it, it will show you a little red arrow to show you the direction that it will paste that task when I let go. So by dragging task two up to the right of task one, it will put it there. Same thing with task three. If I put task three up next to task two, it will put it there. And that's the proper way to structure a project. Now, there are ways of displaying these tasks that the planning view will display tasks in a left-right fashion underneath its respective summary. But some other views, like the WBS chart view, will display tasks vertically under their respective summary. Task one, task two, task three is still are still each subordinates to the project summary, but they're just listed vertically. And that's a lot different than if I was back in the planning view, if I had task two under task one and task three under task two. So keep that in mind when planning your projects. Um, to further define the project, maybe I want this to be a phase. So I'm gonna redefine this. And you can see that to rename a task, all you need to do is just start typing. Just put your cursor on the box and type. If you want to edit what the information that's already there, you can do a slow double click and that will put you inside the, uh, the name or you can certainly hit F2, which is the universal edit mode key and then start typing, um, putting your cursor in there and type uh, where you need to. So a little bit about editing. So now I'm gonna add a couple of items underneath the design phase. I'm using my keyboard again, Alt down and then Alt right. And maybe I'll call this task one and task two. I'll just define this to be task three, task four. It's very generic here, but you get the idea. Okay, so I can continue to break down the WBS as, as far as I need to go. And again, when I'm breaking down the data, at the task level, if I double click on a task, I can enter information, I can enter durations, I can enter work. Task number two might be a, a week, so one W is, is the week and require 40 hours of work. And then I can see if I double click on the design task, it will roll up that information. It's 80 hours, 40 hours for each. And then all the way to the top project summary would roll up everything from all the subordinates below it. Okay, a couple of um, additional items about working with a WBS. We saw how you can click and drag to move things around. Again, you just click, drag, and move a task around based on where you position it relative to another task. You can also click and drag and move boxes around without changing the structure. This is more or less just repositioning it on the screen. And as you do that, you can see that sometimes items will, will shift over because there's more room for things to get tucked together. And we'll come back to this feature later when we have a much larger chart and we want to print it. And we might want to use this feature to, to move things around to get more of a compact chart. So that's the basics for moving tasks around. I also wanted to show you that in a WBS chart, you can expand and collapse items using the, the buttons that are right underneath the, the summary task. So if a summary task has subordinates, there's a, a plus and a minus, which is the expand and collapse symbol. So I can show uh, the project at a very high level of detail. I can expand and collapse to show the various levels of information. I can also start, once the plan is, is pretty complete, I can start using some of the other views to see other ways of displaying a WBS chart. So for example, the WBS chart view will show tasks listed vertically under the respective summary task, but summaries will be listed horizontal under their, their summary task. And that's a feature of this WBS chart view here. This particular view here, the hours and cost view, is a good view for entering, uh, like it says, hours and costs. So if I 
wanted to type in a certain number of cost for a particular task or a certain number of hours on a particular task, I can do that here and then I can see how the information rolls up. When working with the WBS, you have lots of formatting options. And to get to those options, I click the Format tab. One of the things you might want to do is add additional fields to uh, the WBS boxes. And that's to do that is under the Format tab. For example, the Fields drop-down list will show you how to add fields to either the summary tasks in your plan or the tasks in your plan. In this case, maybe I'll add some fields to the summary task. Uh, maybe I want to add the WBS field. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a column here. And what it does is basically reproduces the current column that's listed. But if I click on the left one, the left field, and I choose the field drop-down list, I can choose the WBS field. And that will show the WBS field next to the name field. Also puts a little grid line in between that. That's by default. If I hit the grid lines button, I can remove that grid line just by selecting clear all and clicking OK. And now I've shown the WBS field next to the task name field. And I can repeat that process for the task by choosing fields, tasks. I can add a column to the left. I can click on the left field and choose WBS from the drop down list, remove the grid, click OK. And now I'm showing the WBS field for both summaries and tasks in the chart. Now, a little bit about WBS coding. By default, it will code the WBS chart automatically based on your, your outline levels, based on your summary tasks and the tasks that you've listed. In fact, if I look at this in a task sheet, you can see that the outline level is basically your indented list and the coding structure follows that indented list starting with one at the very top. You have the option to show the project summary task, which is, if I go back to the WBS chart, which in this case is in the Home tab under Project Summary, there is a top level box that's WBS0. So if I used that as the project summary, it would start numbering the tasks at, at level zero. But for the most part, I like to leave the project summary task off and just start my numbering at one, but you may work differently. Uh, there are actually three ways to code your WBS charts with WBS coding. One is to do the automatic approach, which is the 1, the 1.1, the 1.1.1. You can also type your own coding in at any level. So I can type A at the top level, and when I do that, it will propagate all the way down the tree. I can, at the second level, maybe I want this to be the, the BB level for some reason, or the DEV level to correspond to the, the development or design phase. Um, and you can see that as you type in your own codes, it will propagate down the tree based on the level that you're on and things below it. So that's a very handy way to easily recode your, your WBS chart in the, in the WBS Schedule Pro program. There's also the concept of a WBS mask. You get to that using the project tab, and the WBS codes, where a mask you can uh, make the coding conform to your specifications. Like if you had a certain number of letters in your uh, WBS code, maybe three digits at the first level, uh, two digits at the second level, or two letters, I should say, and then maybe three digits at the lowest level. I can create a mask that as you go down the tree, it will automatically code corresponding to the mass that you've defined here. I'm not going to do that right now. Some other options in the Format tab, going back to the Format. Um, there's the ability to define the line styles for the, the WBS chart. There's also the ability to define the boxes and whether there is a box or uh, not a box. In this case, the tasks and the milestones in the chart don't have boxes. You can see that here uh, under borders, where there's no borders around the critical tasks, the critical milestones, but there is around the, the critical summaries and the non-critical summaries. So this is a way to define what has a box, what doesn't have a box, whether it has a fill or, in addition, a, a shadow. The other options are um, the overall style of the structure, 
where the WBS chart is a special style that applies to all the boxes in the chart. The WBS style is specific, uh, specifically says all tasks get listed vertically under their respective summary, but summaries are listed horizontal. That's as opposed to the org chart style, which lists everything in more of a top-down, left-right uh, format. And you can see that these look the way they do simply because they don't have boxes around them, whereas in the planning view, they were looking like this because they're top down, left, right, and they have boxes around them. So going back to the WBS chart, I'll change this back to the WBS chart to show that particular format. The spacing options just allow you to expand or contract and expand the spacing between items in the chart uh, on, on a chart-wide basis. Um, and then these options here allow you to individually arrange the subtasks to the selected summary. So these are the different styles. The list all option allows you to list everything vertically that's underneath. So if I chose this top level summary and I chose list all, it will list the direct items below that vertically as opposed to if it wasn't selected and, and if it had the org chart style, it list it left and right. If I've customized anything like positions or spacing and I wanna reset that, I can use the reset option to reset all the positioning and custom color coding that I might have done back to their defaults. Uh, the matching of the height and the width just allows you to match the box heights across the chart and box widths across the chart. So not to take too much longer, but one of the options I wanted to show you lastly is printing. And printing is um, really easy to do with the WBIS program. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually create a, a much larger chart by copying and pasting a much larger chart here and then doing a preview to show you how this would print. Typically, your WBS charts tend to be very wide. And this is in preview now, I can show you all pages. It's a, it's a two page printout. It's because it's a fairly wide WBS. We do things like with displaying the WBS chart view to stack things vertically to try to make more condensed charts, but still they tend to be a little bit wide. What we can do now is if you see that you have a very wide chart and you wanna do things to minimize the width, you can go back to the chart and maybe use the feature to drag things around down to the bottom of the screen to utilize more of the screen space below so that we're more, more or less staggering items. This will produce a much more compact chart. So you can see it's compacted it a little bit. Still needs two pages, but there are options in the page setup to force that to one page. So in a, the scaling option in the page, uh, page setup option allows you to set it to certain number of pages wide by certain number of pages tall. If I say fit to one by one, it will then force the chart to be on one page. And that's a great little feature too. The WBS chart, just like any of the views in, in the tool can be transferred to the Microsoft Project program. You don't have to use Microsoft Project with WBS Schedule Pro, but you can. So I can take this WBS and whatever I've done, whatever I've scheduled here, I can transfer that to Microsoft Project and all the dates and resources and hours and cost and structure that I've defined here will get transferred to Microsoft Project. So I hope that gives you a good understanding of the overall capabilities of the WBS chart in WBS Schedule Pro. There's probably more information that you can see on our website at criticaltools.com, www.criticaltools.com. Or if you have any questions or comments, email us at support at criticaltools.com. Hope this helps.